I'm delighted to be speaking with Larry Rosenstock, who is the founder and CEO of 16 High Tech High Schools, which are K-12 schools, um, part of a charter network. And he has so many accolades, I wouldn't have enough time to list them, probably in the 10 minutes that I want to allot to this interview. Yeah. Um, but he also runs a teacher credentialing program and a graduate school of education. He worked for the Department of Education. He's been everywhere. So thank you so much for it's a pleasure to be here with you. This is an important topic. Well, you know, right now, obviously, kids are distance learning, and I want to hear from you how this has changed how you're educating your students. Well, obviously, it's something that we've not pl planned for, none of us. And since we have 16,000 children, it gets fairly complicated uh, in terms of the demography and knowing that some parents um, really have a lot of supplies at home for students to succeed with, and a lot of other parents don't have that. And also, some parents have to go to work and some parents have to stay home, et cetera. So all of those things care, give a lot of inequities in terms of all of them. Having them work together and working on teams, which is essential to our ethos is really being challenged right now. If you think about education, it's really, it's really an act of love where you want families to know that their children are as profoundly appreciated as they love them. And a lot of parents are going through a lot of as you can imagine, a lot of struggles right now. Can you share with us some of the practices, some specifics that you're engaging in at High Tech High? First of all, every one of our schools is small. So that means that, that it's not really this beast that you can't really kind of handle. Secondly, our, I want how our students are accepted is very, very important. It's a blind lottery and we designed that years ago. That literally a blind lottery. That means that you, we have all of the zip codes of San Diego, it's about 112 of them or whatever they are, and the kids are, are, are not accepted based on anything other than, than their zip code. That's number one. And number two, they're not segregated in any way whatsoever once they're there. Number three, they're working in teams. Number four, they're making and doing things, not only making and doing things. Of course, there are things that they have to read or they have to understand in math or whatever. We do those things. But we, our kids have published hundreds of books, really, like several hundred books. In fact, I'm sitting in at my home and too bad you can't see them. I've, I'm, I'm, I've got, they're all around me in, in this room I'm in of, of the many hundreds of books our, our kids have worked on. Okay. So what we're trying to do is have kids create new knowledge, like the hundreds of books that they've written and things like that, you know, absorbing existing knowledge, but creating new knowledge. So that's why we're called sort of a project-based curriculum. But the younger they are, I would say that the more traditional the moments are right now in terms of the stress that we're in as, as a country, if not a world. Um, you know, we're just trying to keep them safe, keep them engaged, keep them healthy, keep them happy. Um, having them work in projects, which is what we're famous for, is a little bit more complicated um, given the separation that we all have. Uh, I certainly preferred it the way it was for the last 20 plus years that we've existed, but we're all, we're all basically, we're all adjusting. So now what I'm trying to do is hope to be doing is just continue to do a lot of work with schools around the world. Um, something else happened that was unanticipated, which was we won this prize called the Wise Prize. Um, I don't know if you're cognizant of that prize. Um, it was kind of a pleasant surprise. It's uh, the biggest international prize in education, perhaps. And Her Highness said, what are you going to do with this money? You can do whatever you want. What we're going to do with that prize is, is the international 100. And we're looking for people who are listening right now. Um, high Tech High, Larry Rosenstock is my name. If there is really interesting work, that your students are doing anywhere in the world. Don't be shy. If you don't mind, share it with us. I'm not saying we can include everything, but we are trying to really create the High Tech High International 100. 
And what is starting to bubble up is that we will be likely sheltering in place again. And this is going to impact our students. So what are you doing? What kind of preparations are you making? We have an incredible obligation in California to feed all of our kids. So think about the fact that we don't have to just educate them. Imagine the complexity of getting food to all of them every day in a circumstance where people can't really travel around in that way and you're handing kids something that maybe is really dangerous because you don't know why. So yeah, okay. So that said, um, what we are doing is we have kids working on working in teams, just like you and I are doing right now. You're across the United States from me. We're both working on a project. The project is a great one. We're sharing it with the world. This is exactly here. This is exactly what High Tech High is trying to do. It looks like it's going to get softer in the summer, quite clearly. And that's what it's, the, we, can, we can get out. We can go around and be around if my doctors and my family are right and everything I read about is right. And then it's going to come back, who knows how intently, in the fall. And that is something that we're going to have to cope with. Well, thank you so much for your time, Larry. It was very insightful. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks. I hope to run into you again. Thanks for having me.